we'll move along to our next um, presenter, being Darren Gordon from Centaurus Metals. Darren is a chartered accountant with 25 years experience in the mining industry as a senior finance and resources ex executive. Uh, Darren has an extensive involvement in financing resource projects both from a debt and equity perspective, including his previous position as Chief Financial Officer and Company Secretary for Jindalbi Metals Limited. Darren has over 10 years experience operating in Brazil and has a deep understanding of the regulatory framework and general operating environment in the country. Thank you, Darren. Thanks, Aaron. Um, great pleasure to be here and uh, thanks to the Diggers Organising Committee for allowing us to present, especially to Miles and Sharon, for the opportunity. Um, I want to talk to you today about our Jaguar nickel sulphide project in northern Brazil. Um, we think it's a fantastic asset um, and one that uh, is going to hold us in very good stead over the next little while. There's a lot of work to be done, but uh, we're on a very nice path forward. You've read a few of these disclaimers, or maybe you haven't, but we'll keep pressing through. So look, um, 12 months ago, or a little bit over 12 months ago, um, at Diggers, we announced a deal with Vale in Brazil, where we acquired the Jaguar nickel sulphide project. Um, it was a non-jork resource, uh, had some extensive drilling, relatively advanced asset. But in that period of time, uh, since it, uh, we picked it up, we've been able to complete an enormous amount of work um, in what may be considered trying conditions, um, you know, wet seasons, COVID and the like. But with that, um, we've added uh, some diamond drilling of our own to the 55,000 metres that Vale had, um, put that together and put out a jork resource for this project um, at the end of June this year. And that comes in at a bit over half a million tonnes of contained metal. So when you look at that, we look, feel that that's a very significant project in its own right. It has a high grade component to it, uh, sort of a bit over 300,000 tonnes of metal running a bit over 1.5% nickel. Um, that's in multiple deposits. It's got plenty of exploration upside. Um, the resource really only goes down to about 200, 250 metres depth at the moment. About 80% of that resource is sitting in the top 200 metres. So we've got a very extensive drill program going on to convert inferred resources into indicated. Um, that will also feed into our scoping study, which we're targeting to deliver um, in the first quarter of next year. So I guess with the, with the project and a, a resource of that quality, we sort of say, OK, well, where's the market? Um, when you look at the growth in the EV space, um, where is that nickel going to come from? It's got to come, class one nickel's going to come from either sulphide sources or through HPAL. HPAL we know is an expensive way to get nickel out of the ground, treating laterites. And so we feel like we're in a, a pretty good position. And if you believe any of these numbers as to where that demand for EV is going to go, there's still a lot more nickel that needs to be sourced and supplied into the market. Obviously, Elon Musk has been making a lot of statements over the last little while, but I think it goes well beyond Tesla um, and what they're looking at in the EV space. You just have to look at the European car manufacturers you know, looking to remove internal combustion engines, a lot of that starting from uh, mid this decade. So when you've got the, the head of Daimler and you've got the head of Volkswagen really pushing and saying we need more nickel because we've got to be able to convert our, our, our manufacturing sources into electric vehicles, um, we feel that that's putting us in a very good position for us taking this project forward. So with that, we've, we're, we're looking at being a 20,000 tonne plus nickel producer. Um, we're targeting to do that by the end of 2024. Um, we have a pretty good plan as to what we need to do. We've operated in Brazil for a number of years and we think that we can achieve this aspiration um, with a little bit of good quality hard work. So in Brazil, um, we're in what they call the Carajás Mineral Province and it really is a pro prolific mineral province. Um, there are a huge amount of large mines there, predominantly um, developed by Vale. A number of them are developed, a number of them are undeveloped. Uh, you've probably got over uh, 10 ISCGs with plus 100 million tonnes of metal. You've got S11D, which is the biggest, highest quality iron ore deposit in the world. Um, you've got a number of other operators in that region, a uh, lot of extensive infrastructure. And now we've put ourselves in a position to be able to utilise some of that and benefit from being in that region 
um, with a half a million tonne of metal um, resource of our own. So we sit outside about 35, 40 kilometres outside of a um, township called Tukuma um, that's got high voltage grid power there, um, relatively inexpensive power under 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Most of Brazil's power is hydro generated, so again you're starting from a, a clean environment of, of power generation. Um, that will allow our operating costs to be relatively low. I guess I look at this and go, okay, well, you know, where you sit here in Kalgoorlie, population of about 30,000 people, um, just about 30 k's away, you've had a, a, a major nickel belt that's uh, produced about 1.6 million tonnes of, of, of metal over its time in the Kimbelda Dome. You know, we've already got half a million tonnes of metal in our resource and we've really only just started from an exploration point of view. So you're in a region where there is infrastructure, where you can get things done, um, and I think we're on, on a very smart path to being able to develop the Jaguar project. So just looking at the resource in a little bit more detail, you can sort of see the gold labels there. They are about three kilometres of strike, was originally drilled by Vale. Um, they were drilling it out on broad 100 metre line spacing, looking for Vale sized deposits. Didn't quite make their criteria, but for a junior like ourselves to be able to put our foot on this project, it's, uh, it's been fantastic. There was a number of high grade zones within the Vale drilling. We've been able to follow that up, close in the drill spacing, identify a number of higher grade deposits within that area, and that's what sort of forms our resource at the moment. The western portion of the tenement, which I'll touch upon in a little bit later, is uh, really underexplored, hasn't really been looked at at all by Vale at this stage uh, in their historical work, and um, there's a lot more work for us to do. So just zooming in on that area where the resources have been defined, um, we have Jaguar Central, um, we have Jaguar South, um, Jaguar North, and then the two onces. Um, majority of the metal at the moment is in the Jaguar Central and uh, Jaguar, North, uh, Jaguar South areas. A lot of that uh, mineralisation does come to surface. We see sulphide minerals starting from sort of 10 to 15, 20 metres from surface, which makes it very compelling for an open pit mining operation with relatively good grades. So with that resource, we've, uh, we're in the middle of a scoping study at the moment on that resource. Um, it's been premised on, um, I guess, focusing in initially on open pit material, uh, then looking to move into underground material. 80% of the resource does sit within the uh, top 200 metres. We've really focused most of our drilling into that top 200 metres without having yet tackled the opportunity that does uh, sit at depth. There's some I guess some additional benefits that we get uh, being in the northern part of the Amazon region of Brazil, it's likely that we'll be able to access a, a relatively low income tax rate, around 15% for being in that region. That's something that we need to tackle as we go into operations, but a number of the existing operations in that region are, avail themselves of, of that tax regime. And as I mentioned earlier, power costs sort of sitting under 10 cents a kilowatt hour are going to put us in a very nice position from an operating cost perspective. So all of those things are now feeding in uh, to what we're doing with the scoping study. The main, I guess, process to get that completed is the drilling that we've got to do. Um, I think about 25% of the resource to date is in the indicated category and that's simply a function of drilling. As we get through the drilling and tighten up the drill spacing on all of these resources, we should be able to lift enough of that material into indicated to allow us to get the scoping study completed. The metallurgy is producing a uh, very good product to date, 80% plus recoveries on a 16% con, no nasties in that, so we're very comfortable with the product that we can produce. Um, we do have, a, uh, part of the deal with Vale was to be able to uh, have them look at the offtake um, that's something that we've still got to work through with them over time, but does still give us opportunity to talk to everyone else in the market. Um, the other part of the scoping study which we've looked at is uh, the concept of pressure oxidation. That gets driven, uh, I guess the concept gets driven a lot by the fact that we are in a low cost environment, the fact that power and energy costs are clean and cheap. Um, you know, provides an opportunity that wouldn't exist here in Western Australia. So with that access to skilled labour, um, low cost sort of neutralisation materials, 
and I guess fresh water supply, all of those facets will feed into us being able to look at pressure oxidisation as a, as a viable value add step for the project. Doesn't need it, but it's something that we need to be investigating at this point in time. The approvals process is one that we know pretty well. We've licensed projects in Brazil before. Um, our country manager, Bruno Scarpelli, uh, his background is in environmental approvals before he joined us 10 years ago. He was uh, doing a lot of work with Vale at S11D and Salobo Mines in the Carajas. So really good experience about what we need to do to get the environmental approvals through. It's, it's something that looks relatively straightforward. Um, it's really though the time determining factor for the project. So you know, we're working through to get lodgement of the Iorima by uh, middle of next year. Um, most of the data collection has already been completed, wet and dry season data that feeds into it. We now just need to complete uh, tailings and waste management work through to pre-feasibility standard, and that work is ongoing. We have good relationships with the local municipalities. We've been doing work with them on the roads. Um, the, the community is very supportive of the project. And you've got to remember, in this part of the world, mining is, is the core business. So people have a very strong appetite to see new mining projects get up and running. So high level, we'll look to um, develop the project by the end of, or be in production by the end of 2024. 20, There's a lot of things that need to go on to, for us to be able to achieve that. Uh, the key to it is getting the approvals lodged and in the process um, by the middle of next year. That should see us have the approvals through by early in 2023, uh, funding the project and starting development of that project in the middle of 23, before moving, uh, as I say, into production at the end of 2024. So that's sort of the, I guess, the scoping study. You know, this, with half a million tonnes of metal there already, it, it really is a high quality, um, very globally significant project um, that we think that we can pull together. But their expiration upside on this project is still quite exceptional. Um, we've still got to go and target the, ex, uh, the extensions of the known deposits. We've got to test uh, down dip in a number of locations around the known deposits. And we're also going to test a number of these greenfields targets out on the western portion of the tenement. And just to give you an example of that, um, some sections from the various deposit areas that we have, uh, Jaguar Central on the left, um, moving Jaguar South in the middle and Onsa Rosa on the right. As you can see, all of those intersections that we've been getting, very high quality, high grade intersections have been sort of in the top 200 to 300 metres from surface. And in a nickel context, that is very shallow. So we've got a lot of areas that are still untested. Um, you can see the light blue lines on these, uh, on these sections, they are the EM conductors. One of the important things for our project and also in the Carajas is that EM conductors are a very good indicator of the, of the massive sulphides and semi-massive sulphides. And it's been a tool that we've used very effectively in our exploration to date. So as you can see, there's a number of these EM conductors that extend below the depth of the deepest drilling. Um, we've got to get in and do more work. And so part of the, the 75 kilometres of drilling that we're going to undertake over the next 12 to 15 months will include testing some of these deeper targets. So we're quite confident that as we drill deeper and we chase these EM conductors, we will be able to find more mineralisation. That will only add to the half a million tonne resource that we've already um, put together. And the greenfields is really, as I say, the western portion of the tenement. We have um, three targets that we're going to be testing over the next sort of three to four months. Um, the Falocci in the middle of the page, bottom middle. Uh, Liao sort of running through the middle and Tigri on the bottom left. So those targets are ones that we've infilled the soils, we've infilled the mag, uh, we're doing fixed loop EM work on those at the present point in time um, and are just about drill ready. So Falocci's will be the first cab off the rank um, and we, we're very excited about what that might hold for us. And obviously you can't talk about um, Brazil without talking about COVID. Um, I see our Premier here called Brazil a bit of a basket case this morning. I think that's a bit of a stretch. Um, I think it all comes back, to, it's all relative, and I think that people need to remember that. Companies are doing a lot of work in country to keep their people safe, like everywhere in the globe, and uh, Centaurus is no 
uh, exception to that. We've put a lot of procedures in place that's allowed us to continue to drill. Um, it's kept our people employed. Um, it's been able to, I guess, stimulate the local economy. Um, so there's a lot of benefits, but you've got to make sure you do things right. And we've, we've been very impressed the way that our local team has handled the COVID situation. Um, and it's allowed us to continue to operate. So just to close out on summary, um, we've got a market cap around about $200 million. Um, it's been a really strong 12 months for us, but I do feel that there's still a lot of value to be had in the story. I think that will come to fruition as we deliver more information and put out the scoping study results. We've got a great team on the ground in Brazil. You can't sort of deal with these COVID situations without having good quality people on the ground. Um, we've worked as a team for a long period of time. Roger Fitzharding, who's here, Bruno Scarpelli, uh, who's our country manager in Brazil. We've worked together now for over 10 years. Um, we've got people in Tucumar. Most of our people are based locally, and that's, gonna, that's been very important for us to be able to uh, achieve what we've achieved to date. We've got good support on the register, uh, a few substantial shareholders there. We've got good research coverage, so I can take a look at that at your leisure. So, as I mentioned, we've got a nickel focus, we've got a great resource, we've got the people in country to do it. We're operating in the Karajas Mineral Province, which is a prolific mining belt. It's got a lot of infrastructure already in place. So you put all of this together, you've got all the hallmarks of a very successful project. So I'd encourage you all to have a good look at Centaurus. Um, as I said, scoping study results will come through the early in 2021, um, but we think that will show the value equation very nicely. Thanks for your time. Thanks very much. Uh...